good morning my friends. It's a cloudy, gloomy day here in Los Angeles, California and I guess it's kind of fitting. Taking this guy out for his walk early morning and then we're gonna head off and we're gonna do the vlog early because today we're gonna go be a part of the longest continuing, I guess, celebration or remembrance in Hollywood history. Now what should have been a non-fatal ruptured ulcer would lead to inflammation of the tissue near the lungs and the chest and would cost Rudy Valentino his life at the age of 31. See, the ruptured ulcer should not have been life-threatening. However, as Rudy's brother described it, he said that the doctor that happened to be on call the day that Rudy went in was battling a bout of nerves and was terrified to operate on Rudy Valentino because of who he was at first and was afraid if he made a mistake that it would he would never be able to live it down so because he didn't act in an appropriate amount of time it just continued to get worse and infected and that's what eventually ended Rudy Valentino's life 31 years old. So for 30 years after Rudy Valentino's death, a mysterious woman in black would come and leave a rose at his grave and kiss the grave. This was Dietra Flame, and she claimed to have been deathly ill at the age of 14. Valentino came and brought her a rose. She said she ultimately quit coming and doing it because there were so many imitators. But this is a tradition that Hollywood Forever has had going on for 90 years now. And we'll probably see a woman in black today. Rudy's girlfriend at the time, Pola Negri, mentioned right here, sent an elaborate wreath with her own name on it and then fainted and caused a big scene at the funeral, which a lot of people didn't appreciate. She claimed at the time that she was his fiance, but no one was ever able to verify that. Afterwards, they're like, you said the complete wrong answer. And I was like, well, what was the right Thank you. 
very many familiar faces. How many of you are here for the first time? All right, the next 90 years are in your hands. <laughs> there are also some faces that I, I do not see, and I see the program will be celebrating some of them. But when I first came on the scene, um, early 1998, uh, Bud Testa was helping to run this. I see some nodding heads. And then after Bud Testa, uh, the man who really would show up every year and remind me it was time to get to work was uh, our dear friend Marvin Page, who uh, I'd, I'd ask many of you who knew him, if you don't know, he's about uh, 100 steps that way, out the front door and by the lake. He's at rest, so uh, I think Marvin's here with us in spirit. Um, I see our lady in black, uh, carry a Bible. I see another very illustrious lady in black, welcome. Uh, you come in the spirit of ladies in black, ladies in black of the past. One of my favorites was uh, Deidre Fleming. This is the oldest continuing annual event in Hollywood history. None of it predates it. It's historic. Tyler knows that. He uh, respects that. The cemetery, we are appreciative of their support. Um, inside your program, you see the photo shows 1929 that was taken at the Valentino Memorial. Uh, as you see, it is from outside, and all there are so many people. There's a lot here today, but back then there was in the thousands, and they had to put them, they did the in the summer heat. You um, uh, did the service out there. Uh, the banners, as you saw when you walked up the steps, that was taken same spot outside with several thousand there. Uh, that was uh, 1928. Um, I'm holding Mary Pickford's personal copy, and inside you can see the nameplate has Mary and Doug in there. And Tracy told me a little little story that Mary Pickford actually had a little crush on Valentino. And in her will, she had two provisions on two people: one, Jack, her brother, all of his films and his possessions, and number two, her Valentino collection that she gathered over the years. So I think that's very interesting and it's very exciting to be holding this. So I will be reading uh, three poems. The first one is entitled, Three Generations of Kisses. A mother's kisses are blessed with love, straight from the heart of heaven above. Love's benediction, her dear caress, the sum of all our happiness. Till we kiss the lips of the maid of our soul, we never reach its goal. Caress is divine, you reign until a baby's kiss seems sweeter still. The beloved blossom of baby's face seems to be love's resting place. And a million kisses tenderly linger there in ecstasy. Were I told to select just one kiss a day? Oh, what a puzzle I would say. Still a baby's kiss I choose, you see. For in that wise choice, I gave you all three. Here among the memories, we come from near and far to celebrate the brilliance of a shooting star. I 
I am, well, as an actress in the golden age of Hollywood, I have worked with some of the greatest actors of all times. Uh, Burt Lancaster, Tyrone Power, Frederick March, Fred Astaire, uh, oh, uh, Mickey Rooney, uh, Fred, uh, Jimmy Durante, just to name a few. And I was lucky enough to be cast in the, uh, as a villain in the iconic series Batman. With the good looking, thank you. something special, something really special to the world. The image of glamour, romance, excitement. Yes, just saying the word Hollywood invoked a special kind of, of magic. I think Wodol Valentino paved the way for those of us who followed him. He literally created those magical qualities in his brilliant, yet brief career. Rudolph Valentino, romance, glamour, excitement. They say that in this town, you're only as good as your last movie. And that is true. Perhaps it's really true because it's a well-known fact. And Valentino, last movie, The Son of the Sheep, was arguably his best film. That is the beautiful part. That film, that film captures an image forever and holds it timeless. I am honored to be here with you all today. The 90th Valentino Memorial Service. I am told that this is the longest running memorial service of any star, of anyone. Continuing event in Hollywood history. Congratulations. In fact, I can congratulate all of you for helping to keep the memory of Rudolph. Valentino, alive. Across the street from Romans. 
and it was held in the chapel at that time. And there was a procession here to lay flowers at, at the uh, graveside. By 1928, that's only two years after his passing, it was estimated that 100,000 people made their way down that corridor. So it was quite busy in here. Now, in 1927, they hired a full-time custodian to stand guard here and, and uh, officiate and, and point people in the right direction, keep order. When you have 100,000 people come in, you need to someone. His name was Roger Peterson, who ended up keeping a diary about his stories of the people that would tell him their stories of coming to the mausoleum here. And they're fascinating stories. Some sad, some dreams and visions. It's very interesting if you ever get a chance to read the book. Uh, Roger Peterson was here from 1927 through 1940. Um, seldom known, and I did a lot of research when I was doing my book, Valentino Forever, and I asked all the leading authorities of uh, Valentino, does any photograph exist of Valentino in his original spot in his grave? Now, for those that may be new and say, what is he talking about? It was, temp it was supposed to be temporary, his burial here. And so June Mathis, who had two crypts, allowed the family to put Valentino in her crypt uh, until they could make plans for the grand lavish thing that they had planned, which with the Depression kicked in at 29 and things fell through. But anyways, 11 months after Valentino's passing, June Mathis herself passed away. So now what to do? So they pulled Valentino out and moved him next door, which was uh, her husband, Silvana Balboni's spot, and put her in her grave, and that's where it still is today. In 1934, the estate purchased from Balboni, who was Italian and was returning to Italy, purchased it. So if you read the Valentino's resting in the bar grave, tell them they're wrong. <laughs> West Coast funeral was held at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Beverly Hills on September 7, 1926, at 10 o'clock a.m. And admittance was by personal invitation only. Valentino's funeral captured worldwide attention and was front page news around the globe. The final phase of Valentino's journey was witnessed by hundreds more who were allowed within the cemetery grounds. Many things have been written through the decades, 
I'm afraid both true and false, uh, about my Uncle Rudy, and that is how we used to address him in our family, my Uncle Rudy. Uh, his film career has been very well documented, but as a little girl, I heard the stories of our family and Rudy's childhood from my father and my grandfather. The principal message was always one of family love. My great-grandparents, Rudy's parents, showed a strong love of family. Gabriella Barben was Rudy's mother, and she was French. She made sure that her children, Rudy, his older brother Alberto, and younger sister Maria, were fluent in both Italian and French. Their little sister, B.C., who was the firstborn, died at a very young age of 14 months of diphtheria. Gabriella spent many hours reading stories to her children, and Rudy's imagination was born. These stories later would be put into his characters and his films, and he'd be able to act out his love of adventure. When you hear that he grew up in poverty, this is not true. <laughs> they had a very nice apartment in the town of Castellaneta, his birthplace. And may I say, if you have a chance to get to Italy, try to get down to the region. There's a lovely Valentino Museum. The people are wonderful, and of course, the food is delicious. The family followed the Catholic traditions. Giovanni was a strict disciplinarian, probably because of his military background. And uh, I'm afraid Rudy was a very active child. Giovanni wanted his children to be well-behaved and responsible citizens. And my grandfather would tell stories of how much trouble Rudy would get in with his father for his behavior. But he was also a loving father. He would take the family out to the seashore. They'd take walks in the country. He'd learn about animals and plants. He was a very involved father. However, while he was researching malaria, he contracted the disease himself and he died when Rudy was only 10 years old. Rudy's theatrical career also began in Castellaneta. He loved to be in the school plays. Probably third grade he started and he memorized his lines and was so happy to be involved in acting. He was also a very physical boy. He'd run in the ravinas around Castellanete with his friends, and he'd swim in the creek, and he'd even ride mules. With his father's death, Gabriella, his mother, whom he loved so much, wanted him to be that well-behaved, responsible citizen. And so she sent him to boarding schools and to an agricultural school, but I'm afraid academics was not his calling. So in December 1913, at the young age of 18, he left for America and he wanted more than anything to have adventures. And as my grandfather would later say in an interview, quote, Italy was too small for him.
And there's Terry Moore. Apparently they're turning this into something. They're filming it all. Obviously you guys saw that Terry Moore was dressed up as one of the women in black. I'm not exactly sure why there was a whole camera crew here filming it, but they were, and they had her do multiple takes of it, so I don't know if they're doing some sort of tribute to Rudy or what this is all about, but there they go, and that is the 90th Memorial Rudolph Valentino Remembrance in Hollywood, California. Well, good evening, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed going to the Valentino 90th Memorial. 91 years ago, Rudy Valentino died at the age of 31, and it's nice to see that even a small group of people come out after 91 years to remember a legend. And, uh, I mean, ever since I started vlogging, some of the earliest vlogs that I ever did were Valentino tributes, going to his earliest houses, um going to his very first apartment in Los Angeles. So this was really special to me, and uh, I'm glad I was able to be there and participate in it for once in my life. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, program from today to one of my Patreons, and I wanted to thank Corey Weinbarger for becoming a new Patreon, and uh, I will see you all tomorrow. I have a really great idea for what I'm going to do tomorrow. I was actually going to do it today, and then I remembered that it was the anniversary of Valentino's passing, so we're going to do it tomorrow. This one will hopefully satisfy those of you who love history, but sometimes don't always want entertainment history. This one's a, a little bit of an oddball, so thank you for watching, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for all the great comments, the thumbs ups, the likes, the subscribing, the everything cool that you guys do. And I'm thinking of doing a surprise live stream pretty soon. So keep your eyes out for that. Have a great night, Lionhearts. I'll see you all tomorrow. Good bye. Aww.